Yeah, I know, they already had an opener, but nobody ever considers it that. Did you ever notice that? You talk about, you know, the, the first game, it's it's such a big deal, and they're starting out in Cincinnati, and they're like, what are you talking about? The opener's not till next week. Well, guess what? The opener, the real opener, is today. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dayon Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. And once more, just to be direct about it, happy opening day in Pittsburgh. This will be the 142nd occasion of a baseball season in the major leagues opening up in our city. It'll happen at 4.12 p.m. against the Chicago White Sox, and it will represent, of course, above and beyond anything else, a homecoming for the truly great Andrew McCutcheon. There will be other stuff that comes along with it. A.J. Burnett throwing out the ceremonial first pitch to Russell Martin. I'm sure the scoreboard's going to show Russ smacking that ball out into the left field bleachers after Johnny Cueto dropped it. I'm sure you're going to see, oh, a PG version of AJ inviting a member of the Marlins to, you know, take a seat somewhere. But the day and maybe even the evening is going to belong to number 22, as it should. And I, I feel like before the festivities begin, before we get into, you know, things getting really, really, really intense, which they will, I want to remind everyone, actually, to just kind of take a step back and think about what Kutch meant slash means to this franchise and to this city. His special place within that 142-year history. Because it really isn't like anyone else's. No, he was not the greatest player. That'll always be Hannes Wagner. No, he does not have the greatest backstory uh, or legendary qualities. That'll always be Roberto Clemento. No, he doesn't even have the, the big Hall of Fame resume building type numbers the way Willie Stargell and a lot of others along the way have had but Kutch is a top 10 all-time member of this organization and yeah part of that's because he's a legit MVP part of that's because he does have a lot of prominent spots in the Pirates record books but Kutch's claim to fame here is going to be well I'm going to have to borrow a line from somebody else to describe it, because it was Clint Hurdle who, at his introductory press conference at PNC Park, pledged that he'd make every effort and that the team would make every effort to, you know what I'm going to say here, rebond a baseball team with its city. That was the mission at the time. Clint came in. Clint is the most aware person you'll ever encounter in life. He just saw, heard, and sensed everything. And it didn't take him long to come in here and say, whoa, this is toxic. What's going on here? But he understood not only what it was at the time, but what it needed to become. And it needed to become in short order because he had Kutch. He had Neil Walker. He had other you know, good young players around whom he needed to build immediately. And to get that done, he needed to push the buttons of people who were not used to having their buttons pushed, notably the owner of the franchise, but also the GM of the franchise. Clint will never get enough credit for those three playoff years. Never. I'm convinced of that. He should, but he won't. And yet, still in all, someone had to take the field and make it happen. Kutch was not, and really still isn't, the rah-rah leader type. Kutch goes about his business. He's seen for who he is, for what he's achieved, and that's immensely respected, and that's a form of leadership unto itself. But he's not the guy that's going to go getting in somebody's face. That team had people for that. 
that team had AJ, it had Russ, it had guys that don't uh, don't get mentioned much in this category, but Travis Snyder was one of those types of people. Michael McHenry was one of those types of people. But Kutch was the anchor. Kutch was the foundation, and more important than either of those, he was the engine. He was sitting there in that three hole. He had to make everything happen, and he did. And within that, and the blackout game, and don't forget to wear black today, according to Kutch, he did that. He did that rebonding. That was on him. Might have been Clint's concept. Wouldn't have gotten off the ground without the support of a lot of other players on that team, a lot of other coaches, a lot of other people, and yes, all the way up to the owner, GM, and everybody else. But it was Kutch-centric. And that's a part in a story that no one else has played over the course of the Pittsburgh Baseball Club's history. Take that from someone who's read an awful lot and who's learned an awful lot and been blessed to know people from teams as far back as the 1950s. And you can go ahead and compare that in one direction or another with teams that won championships. You can say, well, they only got out of the wild card round the one time, so it was really a failure or whatever else. Look, they don't even have a wild card round. They don't even have a one and done anymore. It's now a series. And if those Pirates, especially the 2015 team that won 98 regular season games, had that, we'd be talking about Kutch in some other completely different tone. And for that matter, he wouldn't have been traded. But this is his space in the team's history. And this is his place in his life in tones that are even more impassioned than the way he'll talk about the baseball. However much you think today means to you going across one of those bridges to see this game and to see this player again, multiply it by Oh, I don't know, 22, I guess. And you'll have a sense for what it means to him. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Today's J1Q comes from David, and it's anything but a question, but I love it. He says, I'm excited, DK, for the Pirates playing good baseball. The home opener should be a lot of fun. You know what? That's a good thing to be reminding everyone of today as well. Let's not kid ourselves. If the Pirates went, I don't know, one in five on that opening trip, if they got their brains beaten out in even just a couple of those games, And there had been some kind of, I don't know, big misadventure in the field that made all kinds of national waves or whatever. This wouldn't feel the same. This would not feel anywhere near the same that it does. I get the sense that this city is excited about this team, but within reason. I I don't get, uh, you know, we're making the playoffs. We're going to be doing something insane you know, come October. I I don't get that from anybody. What I get is the phrase you used, which is good baseball. It's good baseball. That which you saw in Boston wasn't just the Pirates coming away with three, uh, certainly from the outside perception, unlikely wins. Results are results. Baseball is, you know, even the worst teams, the very worst teams win 40% of their games. That's not what it was. It was what Alex Cora, the Red Sox manager, said after the series. He said, they came into Fenway Park and they kicked our butt. That was him saying this, not me. And they did. They pitched better. They hit better. They ran the bases better. They fielded better. They weren't perfect. 
but they were better in every way. Are they going to end up being better than the Red Sox? I don't know. (laughs) I'm not going to get into silliness now. But they're playing a better brand of baseball. One can be cynical and say that that's people who follow the team just lowering their bar. And I'm sure there's an element of truth to that. But you've also got to be realistic when you're talking about two years ago losing 101 games, last year losing 100 games, and historically it's virtually impossible to make the kind of leap that you'd need to make to get into the playoffs. So again, silliness, just set it aside. But better baseball, good baseball, I'd say that's worth appreciating. That's worth applauding. And that's going to be part of this scene. I'll say it again. Just think of how you'd feel in those pregame introductions or anything else if they were one in five. Because half of you, admit it, would be sitting there thinking, you know, this is great and all, but we're applauding the past and da 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 da. No, no. That's that's not what's in play here. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone who listens to Daily Shot of Pirates. I am genuinely eager to cover this particular event. Let's get together again on Monday. 